So after my last video abruptly ended, I did a couple quick calculations um, just to save some time. So what I did is I took each one of these values and subtracted our expected values. So remember our mu of x was 562.50. So the difference between 525.86 and 562.50 is 163.36. I did the same thing over here and got 182.1. .1. So because this one is closer, that would be more expected. I did the same thing down here because 686.86 is closer to our expected value. That um, would be more likely to occur. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to calculate the standard deviation of x um, from our AFGAR table here um, in order to show you how to do that calculation. And then when you get back to class after break, I'll show you how to do it in the calculator. But we got our expected value was 8.128. So that's going to be important. So mu of x equals 8.128. Okay, so remember that the variance of x is equal to our value, which is 0, minus our expected value squared times the probability plus our value minus our expected value squared times the probability plus we're on two value minus expected value squared times the probability plus value we're at three minus eight point one two eight squared times the probability, 4 minus 8.128 squared times the probability, 5 minus 8.128 squared times the probability, 6 minus 8.128 squared times the probability, <coughs> 7 squared probability point zero nine nine eight minus eight point one two eight squared times point three one nine plus nine minus eight point one two eight squared times point four three seven plus last but not least ten minus eight point one two eight squared times the probability 0 0.053 and you would have to type that out into your calculator but I already <clears throat> did it so let's see so when I type this all into my calculator I got the variance of x is 2.066 now to get the standard deviation so standard deviation of x is equal to the square root of 2.066, which equals 1.437. So to interpret this, you would say a randomly selected newborn baby's APGAR score will typically vary from the mean by about 1.437 units. So a randomly selected baby's APGAR score will typically vary from the mean 1.437 units. So that's just the perfect way to interpret your standard deviation. Now that I've shown you how to do that calculation, I'm not going to show you again. Um, but on the next page here of your packet, it does tell us how to do this all in a calculator. So when you come back to class, I will show you how to do this in the calculator. But for now, I want you to calculate, interpret the mean for this and calculate the standard deviation. 
You can do that using your regular calculator. You don't need a scientific calculator. And this would be great practice for you to do on your own. And then when you come back to class after fall break, we will go through this example together. Okay, the last thing we have to talk about today is continuous random variables. So the last type of variable we talked about was discrete. And remember, discrete random variables were whole integers, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. But suppose we want to choose a number of random between 0 and 9, allowing any number between 0 and 9 as an outcome, like 0.84598 or 7.111119. Calculator and computer random number generators will do this. The sample space of this chance process is... the entire interval of values, the entire interval of values between zero and nine on the number line. Okay, so it can be any of those numbers. So a continuous random variable can take any value can take any value in an interval on the number line. Okay, so continuous random variables are literally any number. So the number of hours worked, yes. Number of miles ran, yes. Average amount of money, yes. Average weight of an elephant, yes. Number of phone calls taken a day, yes. Number of children in a family, yes. All of those are continuous uh, random variables. So while most discrete random variables result from counting something, like the number of times Denzel wants to read, continuous random variables typically result from measuring something, like the amount of time it takes us to finish a stats packet. So how can we find the probability of the probability between 3 and 7 that the random number generator produces a number between 3 and 7? The probability distribution of a continuous random variable is described by a density curve. Any density curve has an area exactly 1 underneath it, which corresponds to a total probability of 1. We use this to calculate probabilities. For the continuous random variable y equals randomly generated number between 0 and 9, its probability distribution is a uniform density curve with a constant height of 1 ninth on the interval 0 to 9. Note that this probability distribution is valid because the total area under the density curve is area equals base times height. So 9 values times 1 ninth equals 1. So below is a graph of the probability distribution y with the area of interest 3 to 7 shaded. So our density curve is this whole entire box. This whole entire thing is the density curve. But if we want the probability of getting a number between 3 and 7, we're just looking at this box right here. So the area under the density curve between 3 and 7 is base times height. So our base would be 1, 2, 3, 4, which makes sense. 7 minus 3 is 4. So 4 times our height is 1 ninth equals 4 ninths. So the probability of getting a number between 3 and 7 would be 4 over 9 which as a decimal, we would say 4 divided by 9 is 0 0.44. Note, the probability distribution of a continuous random variable assigns probabilities to, to numbers of outcomes rather than individual outcomes. So all of these are probabilities of the different outcomes, not one single outcome. Okay, so we can do a couple examples of continuous um, random variables so that you're just as comfortable with continuous and um, discrete. So Logan works at a bookstore in the Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. She takes the airport train from the main terminal to get to work each day. The airport just opened a new walkway that would allow Logan to get from the main terminal to the bookstore in four minutes. She wonders if it will be faster to take 
walk or to take the train to work. Let y equals Logan's journey time to work in minutes by train on a randomly selected day. The probability distribution of y can be modeled by a uniform density curve on the interval from 2 to 5 minutes. Find the probability that it will be quicker for Logan to take the train than to walk that day. Okay, so we have a density curve here. So, 2 to 5 minutes. So, let's see. Okay, so we have a density curve, and we need to go from 2 to 5 minutes. So we'll start at 2, 3, 4, 5, but we only want 2 to 4. So we need this area right here. But we have 1, 2, 3 blocks. So we know that our height is 1 third. So here's my density curve, but I only want from two to four. Because I want to know when it would be faster to um, take the train than to walk and to walk it takes four minutes. So I want less than four minutes. So one third times 2 is 2 thirds is 0 0.66. So the probability of y being less than 4, that's a y, is 0 0.66. So there's a 66% chance that it'll be faster for her to take the train than for her to walk. So the density curves that are most familiar to us are the normal distributions from chapter from chapter four, so our normal distribution. So we've talked about density curves before in the form of normal distributions, and we did that in chapter two. Normal curves can be probability distributions as well for models of data. So example two says the heights of young women can be modeled as a normal distribution with a mean of 64 inches and a standard deviation of 2.7 inches. Suppose we chose a young woman at random and let y equal her height in inches. Find the probability that it's between 68 and 70 inches. So remember, normal distribution looks like this. So it's normal with a mean of 64 and a standard deviation of 2.7. So 64, 66.7. Let's see. Clear. 66.7 plus 2.7, 69.4 plus 2.7, 72.1 would be three standard deviations. And then we go backwards. So 64 minus 2.7, 61.3 minus 2.7, 58.6. Minus 2.7, 55.9. So we want the distribution between 68 and 70. So it would be here and here. We want that value right there. To get that, we have to do the z-scores. So for sake of time, I am going to do those calculations here and then replay the video. Okay, so remember z-score is value minus mean over standard deviation, and I got 1.48 and 2.22. Then I went to table A and got those values. So um, for 68, it was 1.48 standard deviations. So the area below the curve to the left was 0.9868. The area under the curve was 0.9306 here. When I subtracted those, I got 0 0.0562. So that tells us the probability that a randomly selected young woman has a height between 68 and 70 inches is 0 0.06. So this is another example of a density curve, but this time we're using a normal distribution. For part two, it says how many standard deviations away is the mean of 68 and 70. These are standard deviations, so 1.48 and 2.22 respectively. We will do example three 
um, when you get to class.